Ontario Premier Doug Ford made a public plea yesterday asking people to please go get a test, even if they're asymptomatic, after the province fell short of its testing target for the seventh day in a row. And, of course, uh, listening to that yesterday, of course, was Thunder Bay District Health Unit uh, medical head, Dr. Jan DeMille, who, of course, is keeping an eye on things here in northwestern Ontario. Uh, the number of positive cases here in Thunder Bay still low. She's on the line this morning. Dr. DeMille. Good morning. Good morning, Lisa. So what does that statement from the Premier yesterday mean for you? Uh, well, it, uh, uh, it, it, it's certainly that ongoing encouragement of uh, testing uh, and, and encouraging people to get tested and for uh, health care and, and public health and others to be able to support that testing. So we, we had been expecting uh, some more direction in terms of uh, a testing strategy from the province. Uh, we certainly heard that that likely would include some aspects of testing people who don't have any symptoms. Symptoms, um, while still at the same time continuing individuals who do have symptoms. And, and we started hearing a, a bit more details uh, over the weekend about that, including uh, in, the, in the Premier's uh, uh, news conference or in his video yesterday. So that means as of today at that testing centre outside Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Centre, people can go get tested? So... Uh, well, I'll caution people a little bit on that. I, I think the, the, mm -hmm. the, the Premier was certainly encouraging people to get tested. The current arrangement that we have with uh, the assessment centre at the hospital is for individuals to phone us, and we will get them an appointment. And I would still encourage people to do that. So if, they have, uh, if they're wanting to get tested, uh, to give us a call, and we could set them up with the appointment. Um, I, think, I think he was sort of uh, encouraging people to just sort of show up there with their family. I don't know if that was uh, somewhat of a sort of speaking a bit casually, but um, mm -hmm. certainly we have with the, with the hospital and what they've done is that you want to have a, a controlled uh, controlled access to the assessment center so that not a whole bunch of people are there at the same time, um, just for the purposes of being able to do the testing safely, right? And making That's sure right. that somebody who does have symptoms who could potentially have COVID is not potentially exposing someone else. So, uh, and at, so at the present time, continue to phone us if, if you feel like you qualify or want to get tested. Um, I have to say as well, like we, I, while I was expecting uh, the Premier to and the province to sort of increase testing, uh, we haven't necessarily heard uh, the, the more of the details of what they, what they want and what they're, they're looking for. Uh, we do expect to hear today or tomorrow about that. So I think we'll have a few days of maybe adjusting to this new, new uh, approach to testing. Um, but uh, certainly people can phone us. I know yesterday we, we had our call centre open. Anybody who phoned at that time, uh, because they perhaps heard the Premier, we were, if we couldn't get them into the assessment centre right away, we were actually taking their names and we will be calling them back uh, if, they, okay. if it hits the criteria. Yeah, okay. So how was the past week? So I think from from our perspective, I'm I remain cautiously optimistic. I, I think we had a good, you know, that last week was good. We had two new cases reported uh, the same day, uh, both from the hospital, uh, and um, uh, that that was where our only two cases over over this past week. And I think it just reflects uh, the fact that our numbers have significantly dropped in terms of uh, the positive cases that we're seeing. We do know that we were there was testing being done. Uh, we do know that there was a, a fairly significant drop in testing even here. Uh, after the long-term care homework was finished, there was a drop, um, but we were still testing people, and, and I think that was good, although uh, we were really looking at how to increase testing or how to maintain mm -hmm. um, more sustainability in the testing. So I think it's good. Um, I'll note, and uh, first of all, I think in the province, though, uh, it's not going in the right direction in terms of the number of new cases. So we've seen over the last, I think, even three or four days, um, the new number of new cases in the province has actually increased. Uh, yes, and that has. certainly mm -hmm. led, I think, brought primarily by the GTA area. So Toronto Public Health being one of the big ones. They've, they've certainly had more challenges um, 
uh, in terms of getting the virus under control, uh, and that's what they're they're seeing right now. Uh, I think in northern health units we continue to do well, uh, although like northwestern health unit, for example, had a few more cases after going several weeks without any new cases, but um, they're still fairly low in numbers. So, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, encouraging, but at the same time, of course, uh, the reopening of, of the province, right, is being is moving forward. Forward. And we've seen some some reopening of, of things here, uh, you know, gradually and, and more though last week, right, with more uh, retail stores mm-hmm. potentially being open. So all of that uh, leads to an increased risk that people may be closer together or interacting even uh, and where the virus could spread. So um, I think... Uh, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, it's sort of uh, still an anxious time, right? Uh, yeah. You know, it, how this is going and whether the virus is spreading here. Uh, I've always said we have low levels and we got it under control. But now that people are interacting more, of course, there's a possibility mm-hmm. that what virus exists is now spreading, uh, which is sort of challenging. And that the testing that we're doing, testing is always a, a bit of a delayed way of finding out what hap- what's happened because you have to wait for the positive result to get back and then you look back and you say okay you know this person probably acquired the virus a couple of weeks ago so testing often reflects what is happening in the community you know uh, even two weeks ago so we're it's all we're always a little bit behind in what what gets reported to us so and and now we hear about a second wave possibly in the fall so what does that mean for you and your team you have to get all the PPE, the testing equipment, like you're, there, there's no relaxing. You had to be prepared for the next round. Uh, that's for sure. Like, uh, so I, you know, we're, we're coming off the first wave right now. And I, I talk about this with the next phase being the new normal where we have to, uh, and especially as we see the reopening, we may, we will, I do anticipate we will be continuing to deal with cases, hopefully a low n- number, but it might actually go mm-hmm. up because of the interactions. We may have outbreaks, even outbreaks associated with uh, a workplace or, or um, you know, a store, even if, if people aren't physically distancing, there could be, you know, these sort of different outbreaks or clusters of cases. Um, and then, yes, like we, we are, we have to absolutely be thinking about that next wave of the pandemic. This is new. We've never had a coronavirus pandemic in the past, but uh, certainly when you look at especially pandemics associated with respiratory viruses, normally, which is usually the flu, uh, there is always a second wave. And um, respiratory viruses tend to circulate more in the, the fall or the winter time, right? That's a very oh typical pattern, including actually what are our, our usual coronaviruses. We have some that aren't novel, that aren't new, uh, and they, I call them sort of the run-of-the-mill coronaviruses, <laughs> but uh, they usually circulate in, the, in, the, in the, the fall or the winter as well. And so if this one follows the same pattern of those other respiratory viruses, we would, um, uh, uh, and other coronaviruses, we'll see it in, in the fall and in the winter, and it could start early. Uh, of course, because this one is new, uh, it actually could, we, we don't know for sure it won't surge again in the summertime. So while we're, wow. you know, in the, health, in the health unit, we're certainly preparing for, you know, the new normal where we're still going to have to follow up on cases and respond to particular situations mm-hmm. and get our messages going. Um, we also have to prepare for that second wave. And we're doing that, um, you know, by really a lot of lessons learned from the first one, right? We had to respond very quickly to the first wave. I think we did that very well. And I'm very proud and, and pleased with my staff and what we were able to accomplish. But um, we're trying to make sure we're prepared with our, our systems and how we're going to do things and make sure people have the training. And uh, certainly, um, I think that that applies to the healthcare system as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that availability of uh, PPE uh, and supplies, you know, not just uh, the the face masks and the, you know, uh, but also the gowns, which we hear about. And uh, certainly for us, I want to make sure testing, we have, you know, good testing, good testing supplies, good testing capacity uh, in terms of being able to analyze the tests up here in, in northern Ontario, actually. So instead of having to send all our swabs down to Toronto, 
you know, certainly looking to have uh, more ability to analyze tests up here, so that will have a quicker turnaround time and uh, better responsiveness then than we had in the first wave. So uh, yeah. looking at all of that as we move forward. Wow. Lot to think about, hey? Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's different. You know, we were in a different place one month ago, but we're certainly uh, not out of the woods and uh, need to continue to do a lot of work on, around this. Dr. DeMille, thank you again for taking the time out for us this morning. Thank you very much, Lisa. My pleasure. Take, Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Sure. Take, Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.